going on, guys? So, uh, yo, what, what is, is going, going on, guys? guys? So, um, I had a really big bug earlier, and I couldn't, couldn't figure out what was going. going. There, there was, was a huge disconnect between my server and my database. And um, it was actually a very, very simple bug. So, I'm just going to go ahead and reproduce it for you guys now so you can see what it was. So, Right, right now, now right, I have, I have this email that is invalid and it's still going ahead and being created. So um, what was happening is, and look over in the database, you can see that this is happening. Um, you have the user created. And um, when you look down, you say, okay, this thing is not showing up in the database, but it's showing here that it's being created. And, you know, my question was, what the fuck is going on? Like, why is this happening? And um, even down in the terminal, you see things are going crazy, right? So what is happening? What, I'm going to show you what the bug is. I literally forgot one line. I forgot to put this await here. And um, when you look here at the model, you say, oh, this is very simple. You know, this is what you're supposed to see. I forgot to put await in there. And now um, when we go back into Postman and we send this thing off, we get that. You see, this is what we're supposed to get. And the reason being is that, it, and it's very simple, right? It, it's I was pissed off when I found this out. I was like, fuck, I lost a whole, what, hour just trying to debug and going through this thing. And it was so, so simple. And um, it's something that I've been trying to stress throughout the course, um, well, the tutorial before was that this await thing is very, very important because what happens is if you don't put that thing in there your code is just going to swing right past it and go to the next line so even though this thing was not finished so really so let's let's see we have here we put this pre thing in here right it was not finished so it so the code is just going hey um you said that you had something to do behind here this validation we, we never, never waited, waited for the validation, validation to even run. We, we never, never waited for anything, anything to happen after we hit this line. It just went on to the next one. And, and that, that is why we had the problem that we had. That we had. So, so now, now when we go to the database, it um, accurately reflects what is going on now. And actually, we are seeing users, but I need to refresh this. There we go. So now when you see it, you see that it wasn't actually updating the database, but. Um, it was showing us that it was going through in Postman because of that very thing. So that was something really, really big that I wanted to go over uh, with you guys. And I really wanted to show how important it was, especially considering um, what happened in the last video. And you can see how long a very, very simple problem can be and make your, make your code completely unusable um, if you do not you know, check out these little, little pieces. So um, that was very, very big for me because I was like, fuck, what is going on? I, I, I feel like I was going crazy. I had to go to my tutorial. I had to go and look and say, I, I didn't know what I was missing. So uh, when I actually got that, I said, I got to show you guys. I got to show people that this is really, really important because this is stuff that happens in real life. Um, you know, people forget stuff. You know, you forget a comma. You forget a, a weight. You know, you just little things that you forget as a developer because you're kind of thinking at scale about you know, all this other stuff that you're going to be doing. And, you know, you got to slow it down sometimes and just look at the little things that you're missing. So, um, with that, that being said, I'm just going to go until 11 o'clock because I really didn't get much accomplished in um, the previous stream. So, so I just want to take this time to go ahead and say, um, I want, I want to pick, pick up with this, at least, least this pre method, method and um, we'll, we'll see how much time we have once this is done. So, so now, now that I have, we have, we have everything going, going we're, we're, we're back, back to where I wanted, wanted to be um, before everything got hectic. hectic. So, so um, the, the next thing that we wanted to do was with the password, password right? We wanted, we wanted to go and say, okay, user dot, we really wanted to say, okay, let me take it back for a second. In the last stream, I said that. We have this thing. We split our schema up. We, we, we split this model and we created a schema first, which defines the you know defines all the data. That's really what happens behind the scenes. Um, that object that we had here, will um, behind the scenes gets converted to a schema anyway. So what we're doing is we're kind of just doing that by default, and by doing that, we're able to jump in between the code 
and do things because you, as you can see here by using the schema we're able to jump in and use this pre method if we just used it this we wouldn't be able to do that because as you can see on the model we don't have access to that so if I were to go user dot you know you don't, you don't see any of that stuff in here so um, this gives us a very good opportunity to go ahead and um, do some things and the one thing that we want to do is we want to um, encode our password like a, uh, encrypt our password like I was saying we want to use this bcrypt thing to encode our password so that way when you go into the database you don't see the password being stored as a raw string as you see here um, because if we get hacked then it's like you know I hope you change your passwords everywhere else so and, and the way you do this is very very simple um, by using um, this kind of function here as opposed to the um, ES6 um, syntax functions that you see me using um, we get a really really good opportunity to um, manipulate our data because what we want to do is we want to use um, the this binding and um, in the last video I talked about it but I'm going to reiterate it here um, the this binding is literally just saying this specific thing um, it can be an object, it can be a value, it can be uh, a variety of different things. So um, in this case, we know we're saying uh, once we get here um, and we're trying to save stuff, all we're saying is this. And this we're just going to refer to the data that we're passing in. And just to make this a little bit more, um, a, little, a little bit easier to read, for, we're going to say const user equals this. And that's, that's it. it. Um, um, so, so we're telling whoever's coming in here, whether it's me or let's say I hire somebody else to do this, and then they have to update my code. They'll know when I say this, I mean user. And as opposed to just kind of leaving it generic with this, um, it just makes the code a lot more readable. So what we want to say is if user, which is this, um, is modified, and the part that we want to see is modified is the password. Um, when you create a user or you update the user, you want to keep track of the password. So you want to say, hey, if the user is modified, well, if the user password is modified, you want to go ahead and encrypt it because you want to make sure that the password is being um, converted into hash every time you are working with it. Otherwise, again, you're, you're susceptible to getting hacked. Um, well, you, you susceptible to being exposed, not necessarily hacked, um, because um, it's like if you do get hacked, then like your your other emails, you know, your other websites are exposed. So um, what we're going to do is very simple. We're going to say user dot password, right? So we want to take the password, and we're, we want to use that bcrypt thing. So we're going to say bcrypt dot hash, and what that does is this is the out. It, it has its own algorithm in here. Um, I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's a very, um, it's a popular algorithm, of course. Um, you know, you can go ahead and go to the bcrypt uh, data stuff if you want to dig into it some more. Um, I'm just not very good at explaining those kinds of things because I kind of just say I get it, I know what it's used for, I just want to use it. Um, I'm not very big on encryption, at least not yet. Um, there's so much stuff to learn and you know, encryption at this point, you know. It, it's, it's for, for me, me it's, it's better to say, say okay I understand what this is I understand it's, it's efficient that's, that's good enough for me um, you, you know, know as time passes, passes I'll take time to read into this kind of stuff but um, you, you know, know to get me where I need to be this is kind of something that's say okay it's good to know to understand and that's all I need for right now so um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that password that we just had so um, what we have to do is we're gonna say we're gonna use the password that we literally just had and we're gonna encrypt that. So that's what's getting encrypted. And that's how you pass it. So I know it's kind of weird looking at things like this because it's like, oh, user that password is user that password and this number eight. And um, this number eight is just, a, it's like you take a, an algorithm, right? And it's gonna get applied to your, um, whatever you passed in um, eight times. And this is the number of rounds. Um, Excuse me. And this length is just to say, um, hey, and this salt, this is the salt parameter, right? And it, all that is doing is saying, hey, I want to take this algorithm that we're using, this hashing algorithm, and we're going to run eight rounds. And it's like the more you run it, the harder it is to kind of decode it. Because what happens is when you encrypt it, it's a one-way kind of thing. It's not like, oh, you put it in and then you can decipher it. 
it, it only goes, goes one way. way. So, so somebody, somebody can't just hop in and, and try to get, get your password out from that. that. And, and we'll, we'll see how that works in a second. second. Um, so, so this is all we really have to do here. And, and then the, the next thing we have to do is, is use this next thing. Um, what, what I was seeing here in the terminal, terminal for some reason was that, that um, it, was it was actually working without it. And um, I really just want to check to see if this happens again. Um, because I think that's a little weird. And actually two things. Um, I want to check my terminal to see if this thing is still happening. Um, so the issue with that again is uh, this is already handled. Um, this was actually happening because for the same reason um, that the uh, postman stuff was showing that user was created when it really wasn't. And, and that, that was, uh, again, again, because of the whole weight thing. thing. So, so once I put a weight thing, thing once I put a weight in there, this thing, thing um, well, this, this, um, this thing, thing here was saying, saying, hey, we're going to throw an error. error. So, so what happened is now that it threw the error, error this save didn't even get, get to this line and jumped down into this catch block and threw the 400 error. So that's why we were able to see the 400 when we do this. And that's where that's coming from. Um, now, now that they, now that I had that await in there, so that await thing was breaking my code in more than one way. Um, but back to the whole password thing. This is really all we have to do to change the password. And um, now we should be able to see it um, here, as well as in the database. Because uh, before, oh yeah, I went, before I said that, I wanted to pass this off. So we're gonna just put a uh, at symbol here, so we can see um, a proper email, and then we're gonna send that off. And, and you see here, right, it's, it's just sending the request and it's just waiting forever. And it's because it's waiting for next to be called. Previously, it was just jumping through, jumping through to the next thing because we never had the wait there. Um, so that was why this stuff wasn't working for us as well. So now, once I go ahead and put next in there, it'll work. And, and you see here, it timed out because it was like, hey, we've been waiting for forever and nothing happened. So we were fucked. And now, oh shit, there we go again. Um, now, okay, I think this is uh, actually a redo. So if I send that through, we're getting an error here with the duplicate. There we go. See, you see how, how crazy it is now that things are um, working here. Um, so now I have to change the email and then drop this thing off and then look at that um, hmm. same issue um, I was, I'm almost certain I'm going to go in this database and I want to see the password in there as hashed and it's going to piss me off yeah. so this tells me that I actually applied hashing incorrectly and um, the way I know that is because I know it's something in here. So um, with this, this is actually the, the part that um, was a little tricky for me. And um, the solution is actually not that complex. So um, the thing that we have to do is, figure, is, is just destructure the way that we pass that password in there. And I'm actually just going to go argument, ahead and which I'll talk about in a moment. Called I wasted next. a lot of time earlier trying to get to I this get thing. So um, I just want to and dot ID. see the proper way before I just go ahead and, and, and waste time again. So um, actually, I'll let you guys see as well. So do not just stare at me. Update okay. route in the um, router file. So I'm almost certain ID. I had that written out correctly, but I just want to be sure. Do is correct. So um, user do this thing here oh, too far now with this in place uh, nope so this already tells me oh you see it you, do you do you see it what, what did I forget what did I forget oh wait oh wait so don't forget you're awake because we have an asynchronous function and again what that means is just that and you see here I didn't even do it I didn't set it up properly so this async await stuff is very very important um you see here uh, so and what that means is okay if you understand synchrony at all so if you say like two people are in sync uh i mean like singers right that means their their pitches their their tone all that stuff is matched is in 
is, is in unison. unison. They're, they're hit the same note at the same time. time. You know, two, two people walk in sync. They're hit what left, left, right, you know, same, same time. time. Um, with code, that means your code is ex executing in the same time. It means once it gets, it's going kind of linearly. Um, but once you have asynchronous code, it's like, hey, this, this thing is going to take a little longer process than you would than the time that the code than than the actual I want to say thread is taking to actually run your code. So you can have your code running here, and then one of the methods that you call may be a little sooner. It might be still executing and hasn't really returned its value yet. So um, that's really asynchronous. So it's kind of like your code's running this way, and then one of the functions that you call is kind of going off on its own and doing its own thing. And you don't know how long that'll take. So that's what the whole asynchronous, asynchronous thing is. And if you screw that up, then you start to run into the kinds of errors that you've been seeing me have all day today. So um, save yourself some time and um, you know pay attention to this whole, um, I'm going to say synchrony, even though that's not the right thing, like pay attention to this asynchrony and um, you'll be fine. So. Again, um, just be very, very careful on this, and you you'll know when to use this when you if you click, hover over this. And this is one of the very beautiful things about Visual Studio Code is that it kind of it tells you what's coming out of your data. So when you look here, this says a promise. So almost always, unless your promise is changing, meaning if I go dot then to do something else. Um, you're going to have to use this async await thing because what I would do if I was to do this, I would go here and then I would click that then and then I would say next. And that kind of t and that's one way you can do it to tell your code to say, hey, wait for this thing to finish, then do something else. Otherwise, you're going to have a really, really big problem. So um, that's what you're going to want to do. And um, you'll see here that I already got next in there. So now when I save this, we shouldn't have any problems. So now, um, I'm not sure if that went to the, uh, to the database. So let me go ahead and re-execute this. And it doesn't seem like it's in there. So um, actually, let me look at the value because this might be the only one in there. Yep, yep that's in there. So um, I'm just going to put, um, I'm going to put the two right here so that way you can see the difference. And then we're going to send that off. And then look at that. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Look, Look at that. that. We, we got, got our new password. password. And this, this is, is the password that you'll see in the database. database. So, um, and this is, again, the protection that you'll have for to make sure that you don't get hacked. Well, not to say you don't get hacked, because, um, you know, if someone wants to hack you and they're adamant about it, they'll find a way. Um, it's just more about, this is a security kind of thing where it's say, okay, if I do get hacked, yeah, you get people's emails and maybe a, a, a little bit of other information, but this same concept can be applied to a whole list of other stuff. But your email in itself, it's okay because people are pretty 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 safe with their email, with the use of their email. You kind of are aware of what spam looks like and all that kind of stuff. So um, the threat is kind of minimized there. The real thing is just this password. You don't want anybody getting the raw password exposed. Again, because people use the same password in across multiple applications sometimes. So you just want to give people some security to say, okay, you might have got hacked, but they didn't get anything important. So that's what that is. And that was really my primary focus um, for today to get that set up. Because this is a lot. You know, this does so much in terms of security. And um, it starts to introduce the concept of middleware. Um, doing stuff before or you know, before, during, or after things are happening. So um, that's one other thing that I really, really wanted to get into. Um, for, um, you still have a little bit of time, so I'm going to try to jump into something else as well. For instance, if you're um, into, let's say, okay, now that we have everything set up here and we created the ability for people to log in, and actually, and actually, there's one more thing, thing I wanted to do. Um, there's this, this unique thing on the email, and um, I wanted to test that to make sure that people can't create duplicates. Yep, yep there we go. go. Boom. Um, um, there's, there's some handling I could probably do, but I'm not going to do it right now because um, I, I really don't know how I want to handle this. Um, so I'll just keep going with this. So I just wanted to make sure that that worked. 
And, and then, then um, the same thing will happen with another kind of error that can be introduced. If I take this out, I said this was required. So if I go ahead and try to chuck that in there, boom, look at that, I'm getting errors. So all of this is working exactly how it should now. And that is important. And this is a major, major step in terms of what happened an hour ago. <laughs> so um, let's go to the next step, and that would be, hey, how do you log in, <laughs> right? Um, in fact, if you're, so if you're creating a website for yourself, right, and you want to post content, okay, cool, you can get it, you can do all this stuff with all these endpoints, but how do you log in and actually do it, right? So what you want to do is you want to create another router, and it's actually going to be another post router because we want to send information out and we want, to, we want to send information to our server. So that's really what's supposed to, to send information to the server. And usually you use, you use any creation, but um, since we're trying to log in, it's kind of the same concept. And um, it, this is actually gonna be a little bit more um, in depth and we're gonna need a little bit more um, middleware. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create this admin slash login um, kind of thing. And actually, I actually want to just use login because the slash thing is kind of killing me. Uh, I want to reserve the slashes for more important stuff. So um, what will happen is I'll use this um, slash login to get in, and then the admin stuff will be um, will, will, will handle its own stuff. So then um, I can always change it. So no, no, you're not bound to this stuff. You can always change what you want. Just, just try, try to change, change early in your process. process. Um, otherwise, you're gonna spend, spend a lot of time fixing anything that relies on that specific piece of code. code. So, so um, just always think, think about that. that. And, and then, then now, what we have, we have to do is we say, okay, okay now, now that we're logging in, in, you have to pull off the information, information that you're sending to your server. And um, in this case, I really am going to check my notes because. Um, I reviewed it and it, you know, like I said, I just haven't done this enough to just go off the top of my head and, and drop this off. So um, the next thing for this is um, we are talking about logging in. Uh, we'll actually have to do something else. We'll have to go in here to our user schema and we'll have to add on something called tokens. And we'll, we'll, you'll see exactly what a token is in a second. And um, you'll see why it's important. So um, right here, we're gonna say type, I believe it's a string. And um, next we're gonna say required, it's true. And um, I think that's all we need on that, um, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it could be wrong, you know, as you can see, but um, that's all I'm gonna put there for now. And then um, I think that we need a default. So the default is going to be a empty array. And um, it's gonna be an array for many reasons. Um, you can log in, for instance, if you have Instagram, you know, you can log in for multiple devices or just like your Google account, right? You can log in on your computer, your phone, your laptop, your tablet, your mother's computer, your friend's phone, all that kind of stuff. So um, what you really want is, um, that's why you have to store it in an array because you'll have many, many different versions. And actually, um, I believe, I, I skipped something, I think it's tokens. And then inside of that, you have each individual token. And, oh, actually, wait, uh, keep that. And then it's gonna be token. And the way I get the array on that is like this. Um, it's an array of the token. Yes. So, I believe this is how it works. And um, it's an array of token. There we go. There we go. Just trying to think about this stuff in my head. No biggie. Um, why doesn't it like that? Oh, that's all right. 
you saw. Now you saw jacked up. And um, we want to surround this in a bracket like that. And what aren't you happy about here? Comma. What do you mean comma? You don't need a comma. You're a this thing. That's what you are. And um, what's up this? Yeah, there's definitely no comma needed here. So uh, let's see what I'm missing. Let's see if they come out. Yeah, there's definitely not supposed to be a comma here. And I'm going to go ahead and cheat again. Um, just because uh, I don't want to waste any time. And let me see here. So I know that they modified this thing in here somewhere. Maybe I'm jumping around a little too fast. Nope, it is not like in this thing. I'm going to find it though. Let's just go a little bit slower. Dot? And we're going to password. There are and actually, I think he set this up and then did it last. You'd be able to create users with the spar database. So we heading over to Robo 3T and for you to have the inspire recording new so going to provide here we go. It's the next line. You now have an HT here. And once we have our spire, this is a in the day WJ one little down below down below modifying this thing so um where are we now here we go it's okay. so each so it's an array and we just want to throw a token on there and I just I'm just I'm going to be honest I'm a little mentally lazy right now I don't want to go through and, and um do some okay I'll, I'll do it myself because it's taking too long um why is it asking for this? I'm gonna do this. It's token is the array. I think I just have this notation a little off. What the heck? I think it's X instead of Z. So um, shit. I didn't mean to do that. There we go. Okay. So um, this token thing is just happy because of this array stuff that I put on it. So if I put one here, it still doesn't shut up. So, so, so let's see if it likes it this way. Um, it strikes me a little odd to do it this way, but um, I really just want to see how it gets itself set up. So let me just give it a second to set this up. And there we go. So maybe I have to say it's an. Oh, I see. We, we do have to put the array here. It's an array of type token. And then, um, there we go. There we go. There we go. See? A little extra processing to get this stuff working. And there we are. So. It just seems a little backwards to me. I'm going to try this one more time. I'm going to force this. <laughs> I am definitely going to force this. Ah, there we go. I don't know what I did last time. so um, There we go. So this is what our thing looks like. Tokens is an array. And then this is the object that is in that array. And um, then what we have to do is say, okay, when we create a user, we want to generate a token. And in order to do that, we have to add a method onto our schema. And instead of adding it here, like how we did pre, we want to use the actual um, model itself so that way we can create a function on the model that we can use um, anywhere else in, in the um, within the router 
So, for instance, right, we're going to do this. We're going to do user.schema. Dot methods. I can't remember if it's dot methods or dot method. Look, we'll find out if we get an error. And um, actually, I forgot something. It's supposed to be user.schema. Dot static. Dot method. Method or methods. Um, methods. And um, this is the part that gets us where we need to be. And um, in here, you see it shows us um, that you can give it a name. So what we can do is we can say um, methods dot, and we're going to call this uh, generate uh, token. And then um, from here is where we define our function. And um, if you want to see this in action, we can go to the documentation here at Mongoose. And uh, let me go to middleware. And in the middleware, that's where we talk about where static at. Let me see if I can find the static. And I, I really just want to show you kind of the documentation because this is literally what you have to do in real life as a developer. Um, you won't be able to just go in and just code. Sometimes you'll have to do stuff, you know, and this is it. So add a function property to schema status and this is it here. Um, I'm almost certain that you have to do um, the dots like how I did it, um, but I can definitely be wrong and we will see in a second if I am. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm Fairly, fairly confident, confident that I'm not wrong, wrong but, but what do I do when I'm in doubt? Request a new I method, under function, a new const uh, uh, we did for our middle user schema methods dot. Okay, okay so, so I was kind of close. So, so I think it's because, because I, I had the word that this is a static method in here and not actually like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it's a static method, so, um, it doesn't. So it's, it's instead, instead of using a specific, specific instance of this thing, thing it's, it's something that exists on the model, and that's, that's why we were able to call it outside of um, this, this code in here. So um, we're going to call this generate token, and then um, actually I think we do this. We don't actually do this here. We say that equals something, and we're going to say the sync function. Um, I think we would use the this binding in here, and um, it's going to be this, um, and I think we still need to use next. Could be wrong. Actually, no. We need to do a few things, actually, in here, and this gets pretty thick. Uh, just looking at my notes on this thing. Um, yep. We need to use this because we're going to do the same thing like how we did in the pre, but a little bit deeper. And um, did I need to have access to next? Um, I don't think I did in this one. So um, what we'll see is we're going to say, okay, we're going to use this this binding to say const user equals this just as before. And hopefully you remember um, my little um, brief explanation on what this is. And then what you have to do is say const token equals um, what we're going to do is we're going to say we need actually have to pull in something called JSON and web tokens. So first, I have to pull down the the, the server here. We stop that. We're going to clear it. And if you're using Windows CLS, if you're using um, Linux or Mac, I think it's uh, clear. And then you're going to do um, npm install JSON web token. And I am definitely going to look this up because as you can see um, how I did earlier, I completely screwed that up. So I'm going to do JSON Web Token. And there we go here. And look at this, four, almost 4.5 million downloads. So this is a really, really, really popular kind of thing. So I'm just going to call it Control Z because I don't need any more errors in my life right now. Um, so it should be, and then we're gonna install that thing. And um, this is uh, here we go. 
talking about my life not needing any errors and here we go um i'm actually just gonna try this again because i literally don't even know what that was there we go see i, I don't know what it was but uh it's in there let me just check my um package that json yep we're in there I, I don't know what happened the first time um so we're just gonna keep on going and then we need to const um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna call it JWT just because it's you know J JSON with token require uh, JSON with token. Oh, thank you for all the complete. So um, what this is gonna allow us to do is that is what generates our token and. Um, the thing, the thing with this is that um, when we do this, it's actually a, um, a multi-step process. Um, maybe, maybe not. I just, just looked at my notes, so that's how I know. <laughs> so um, we're going to do JWT, which is JSON Web Token, and we have to sign it. And when we say sign, it's like your signature, right? Like how you sign a contract. You put a signature on it, and um, you say, okay, I'm going to take this data that you're giving me well i'm going to take, take some then this is the payload right and the payload that we're going to give it is the user id so um we want to say id is um uh i'm sorry i kind of just thought about something how i got this one screwed up um the password's already a string here but um we want this um the users i so what we're doing here is we're signing it and when we sign this thing we have to give it an object and the object we're going to give it is the id so um because each user's id is unique as you can see in the database you it automatically creates these unique ids for us so we're just pretty much using that to um create these um, JSON web tokens. And, and these are exposed to the internet. Um, you know, I don't know if you, you, know, you look on YouTube videos, you look on a lot of different stuff, maybe Facebook. Um, these tokens are visible and people can see them. But they're safe because nobody, because by signing your token, um, you can prevent people from um, trying to manipulate them or steal them or not steal them because you know it's used to somewhere else but um it just it, it doesn't allow people to um do anything you, they're, they're not gaining anything from using your token but if they try to manipulate it or, or things like that um that's what the whole benefit of signing these tokens does for us um so without further ado we're going to go ahead and sign this thing and we're going to use the user id that was um the, of the, the user, user that we're signing in as so, so this is going to be user dot i think it's underscore id um so, so that's, that's how that works and um and, and then um with, with this, this you have, have to give it a secret key and, and this is how you sign it so you give it a signature and as you can see there it is of type secret that, that is interesting, interesting. I, I thought, thought it was gonna, gonna be it's, 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 a it's a string though so I'm just gonna show you this like it's gonna be a bunch of random key presses, presses. and uh, good job duplicating that and um, I'm gonna go here and then out of here we're gonna return the token right so we're gonna return that thing um, but we're not done yet so um, in order to actually log in, you have to add this token onto the user. So um, yeah, you have to add them to the user. So um, 
what is, is going to happen is you have, have to go. go. Um, so, so I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm actually, actually just going to work with this first, one step at a time. So, so um, I'm going to get ahead of myself. myself. So um, when I go here, I want to say send the user in the password, and then we need to go say hey. Um, let's say const user equals um, find by no we're not finding by ID because we're sending in a name and an email so we need to do find one right so, wait, um, we need to do user dot find one and we're going to find one where the email and password match so we're going to say email is going to equal to um, request dot body dot email and we need that password so it would be request dot body well I see you say the password is going to equal request Ooh. Ooh. I almost forgot so um, we actually have another thing here with the password um, we need the we need to have to then pass in the password that the user gives and say hey is this password equal to the password that we hashed and um, if those two match up then we'll allow it to and then we know that you're good to go and um, that is a bit of the process that we're going to do um, in a second I'm just reviewing really really quick to see what's going on um, so Well, I need to take better notes, don't I? So, um, here we go. Get public user. Okay, so we're going to say, and I'm going to wrap this up really quick. I, I, I didn't expect to intend this to be really, really long. Actually, what I'm going to do to save us all time, I'm just going to console log that token that we created, and then we'll pick it up tomorrow. Um, I'll do user dot generate what did I call that thing oh I didn't save it so let me save it and then uh, I should be able to have access to it now user dot generate token and there we go so just run the time supposed to go uh, we'll find out in a second Let's go get this thing running. So far, not bad. User router. What am I missing? Oh, catch. I'm missing my catch block. Ah, no time for that. I'm going to make this very simple for you guys. And then we're going to go over here. And I need to create that new route. So I'm going to do local host 3000 slash login and then I'm going to send this thing out and what do we get oh I didn't send anything well yeah I didn't send anything oh um response oh that's what I can do I'll do this response dot send that Hopefully that works. Um, let's see here. Four four. Uh, the console did the console log even comp didn't even log anything. Let's try this again. I'm just trying to make this really simple, and it, I'm not able to do that. Oddly. Let me make sure I got this thing. Uh, host. Oh, that's why. Good. Yeah. Uh, post send that again and um, we should be able to get this thing rocking doesn't seem to like that because we're not even sending anything so oh here we go and the reason why it's waiting is because we didn't send anything off so um, we're going to do we're going to put this in the try catch block 
Uh, it's, just, it's not liking it. So let me try. Let me try that. And then we just do response. Instead of logging, we're just sending in the response. So let's say um, response dot send that. Um, it might give us a problem because it's not JSON. Um, and then we'll say catch um, any errors. And uh, we'll just do um, response dot uh, status. And in this case, we're posting, so we'll say it's 400 error. Meaning you did something wrong, and then we'll send that off. And then uh, we'll just send the error button. There we go. So now let's do this again. And we'll send that. And push it in there. So let me just log it. Um, I'm not sure why that didn't work. Um, console.log. I'm really rushing this part, so um, I could be making a mistake with that. But um, I'm hoping that. I didn't. That you can at least get the error. Actually, uh, okay. Let's just do this. I'm sure there's magnitude of things going wrong there. So, what the hell? It's like when I. Oh, okay. So that means my error is coming from this thing. Um, I could just want to put all the properties in there. Let me just do dot ID and see what happens. Um, and send that thing off. So this is what's actually causing our error, our thing here. And send that, um, I don't know. Uh, let me see if I can console log it up here and you can at least see what it looks like. It's, that's all I really want. That's why it, it doesn't come directly out as a string. And that was the issue there. Um, it needs to be a string. So you see here, it has to be a string. And this, ob this object ID isn't directly a string. Um, that's what we're seeing here. Um, so I'm gonna, I, can, I should be able to take this out and just do this. So like I said, I knew it, I knew it was something simple. I knew it wasn't like a, a big, big deal. Um, so saving that. And then, and then I go over here, here sign. Um, we're still getting something going on. Um, this one here, the ID had to be underscore two. Underscore ID user dot underscore ID, and then we did dot two string. Let me try user without the underscore. I know that it shouldn't work. Actually. We're we'll sending here. Content.log user. Um, let's see here. Uh, 
I just want to see how they use it. Because when you send your JSON one token, right? It was sending... Um, little wear function, like this, right? WT, which get like for the secret. I'll use the see, same value I had not ID. And remember, this is an object ID, so, so I'll use to string to convert. Okay, cool. I know I didn't fin I know I didn't We're that. just sending back the user. Uh, did it again. Oh, I always do this. Oh, wait. What is going on with me today? This is how you can tell I'm rushing. Um, and with that being said, um, this is also supposed to be um, in a way. Um, and I don't know why I just don't verify by going here. Um, actually, that doesn't tell me. So, um, so I don't even know why I made that an async function. Um, it doesn't seem to be the function itself, but just waiting for that thing to happen since you're doing it um, technically on the database thing. Uh, because I don't even see it in a wait for anything over here. But, um, you know, that's neither there, here or there. Um, so we wait for we wait for it over here. And then um, we should get our value back. Stop making me look crazy. Um, actually, the one thing I did miss was if they used... This model thing. I'll save yeah. the user route so that's that send that oh I see it's supposed to be on the small user I used on the big user um actually um that's my problem so I'll have to finish this thing tomorrow because I'm, I'm missing some pieces here and um I really just don't have the time to create this thing so, um, I'll go ahead and, and, wrap, this, and wrap up here and pick up tomorrow, and um, we'll get deeper into this, we'll clean up some stuff in Postman, um, you guys, I don't like all these open tabs now, so we'll clean this up, we'll um, add some automation in Postman, and uh, we'll finish logging in, we'll add some logging out logic, and um, we'll start adding some authorization um, middleware into um, our router, so for instance, all this information here should be only for administrators, and so should um, creating users and stuff like that. Well, not creating users, but um, creating posts, um, deleting posts, updating posts, all that stuff should only be for administrators. So um, I'll pick up tomorrow, and you guys have a good night. So thanks for tuning in.